Hello everyone, welcome to our visionary classes. Today we are with the second lecture series on the interior of Earth. Before I would like to start my lecture series, I would like to request you to subscribe our channel and contact us for the latest study material and for the regular online classes do contact in this number. Okay, so today we will read interior of Earth. So what is interior of earth okay and what we read here okay so basically here the two diagram i am showing one is the diagram for the seismic wave and other one is the diagram of the interior of earth with the seismic wave frequencies okay so the question arises how the interior of earth was framed by the scientist okay so how they know because we can travel to the center of earth so how they know that earth was like this like there is a three division of the earth like crust mental and core how it is possible so this is mainly determined using the help of the seismic waves generating from the earthquakes okay the past earthquakes have helped to determine the interior of the earth through the seismic waves bending refraction and different kinds of movements of the seismic waves usually helps in determining the interior of earth okay so these waves contain some important stuffs as we mentioned related to the internal structure of the earth okay so the seismic waves are the main source of determination of earth interior during the earthquake P and S wave radiates from the hypocenter. Suppose this is the hypocenter of the earth curve. Okay, the earthquake gives two types of waves that is P and S wave that radiates from the hypocenter but faces refraction. As we know, the there is a difference in the composition of the interior of the earth from the crust to core. So, which gives us this kind of differentiation in the P and S waves directions okay so it faces lots of refraction through this interior of earth in a denser medium in the interior while S wave which can travel in the liquid medium is only detected on one quarter of the surface at 103 degree okay so here you can see the A S wave is only located one fourth of our earth's seismic waves movement okay so here this is the one fourth part okay at a 103 degree angle okay so which indicates that there is a mention of liquid core inside the earth while p waves bend and comes back again here you can see the p waves comes goes bends and that comes back again but the this portion that is 142 degree to 142 degree is the shadow zone where s waves do not moves okay similarly there is a shadow zone of 103 degree to 142 degree for the p waves so we should remember this that within 142 degree to 142 degree there is a shadow zone shadow zone for s wave okay and 103 degree to 104 degree shadow zone okay shadow zone for p waves okay so this you should remember that shadow zone lies within this range so here we start with the interior of earth what do we have within the interior of earth the first we can see there is a ice cap that is on the surface of the earth as we can see okay then the crust the crust is divided into two types that is continental and oceanic okay the continental crust is mainly composed of granitic rocks granitic rocks while ocean composed of basaltic rocks okay 
Now there is a stiffer mantle which is highly hot in but there is a temperature change always happens due to which there is a repeated convection currents that is found in the mantle while outer and inner core are liquid and solid composition of iron and nickel okay there is a also a viscous layer that is asthenosphere over which the all the continents are moving according to the phenomena of plate tectonics okay so what do we remember that earth from the inside is made up of concentric layers as we see there is a concentric layers of which crust the mantle the outer core and the inner core are significant okay these are only the significant part of our this interior of earth okay these are also called as the mechanical layers of the interior of earth okay because of their unique and physical chemical properties this kind of division has been happened okay the crust is a silicate solid as i mentioned already okay the crust is a silicate solid the mantle is a viscous molten rock and the outer core is a highly viscous liquid while inner core is a dense solid so you can see there is a variety of chemical properties of our different layers within the earth now here i am showing the better understanding of the interior of earth okay there are three chemical layers okay that are called as the compositional layers so first one is continent oceanic okay second one is mantle and third one is the core okay because their compositions are different according to the chemistry affinity of this layer okay while the mechanical layer that is composed of the continental and oceanic crust as well as lithosphere mesosphere outer core and inner core okay this is according to the physical division of the layers this is according to the seismics this is atomic according to the seismic waves that we already studied in our first slide okay so this is the center of earth okay this is the diameter of earth so you can remember this okay i am moving to the next slide so ha huh, this is a very important topic i should uh, tell you this about this is very important topic you should remember this okay between the two layers of the earth there is a chemical difference layer present within the two mechanical layers okay those layers are known as the discontinuity okay a layer that is chemically as well as physically little bit different from the upper layer and the lower layer okay there is a rapid change in the seismic waves also within this layer so the first layer that we are reading that is between the upper and lower crust while the mohorvik discontinuity between the lower crust and upper mantle is called as mohorvik discontinuity okay the lower crust and upper mantle so basically the mantle and crust division is through the mohorvik discontinuity while the rapid rapid discontinuity is between the upper and the lower mantle and the gutenberg discontinuity is between the lower mantle and outer core so lehman discontinuity is also there which is between outer core and inner core so you should remember this because this is coming in the exam most of the times so you should remember the discontinuous discontinuities between the layers so this is the topic that is related to discontinuity within the interior of earth okay discontinuity now come to the detailed explanation of the interior of earth okay so the crust the first layer that is 0.5 to 1% of the earth's volume okay and 1% mass of the entire earth okay there is regular increase in the density and average density is about 2.7 g while average density of the earth was around 5.5 g per centimeter cube okay while the continental crust can be thicker 70 km in the areas major mountain systems are there okay temperature increases as much as 30 degrees celsius for every kilometer in the upper part of the crust while outer covering of the crust is of sedimentary material and below that lie the crystalline and igneous metamorphic rocks which are acidic in nature so you should remember this 
okay you should remember this that our crust is mainly composed of crystalline igneous and metamorphic rock which are acidic in nature okay the continent are composed of the light silicates okay as we know this is the cl okay this is the cl composition that is silica and aluminium composition okay silica and aluminium composition is found in the continents region of the crust okay also called as cl while the oceanic region have heavier silicates that is silica and magnesium okay how what does it means it means that they are more dense as well as they have more mass more uh, atomic weight okay so as we know the aluminium is very light as compared to magnesium so we can tell that oceanic crust is mainly composed of silica and magnesium also called as sima okay the continental crust is about 2.7 gram per cc while which is composed of the lighter felsic sodium potassium aluminium silicates rocks like granite while the oceanic crust is 2.9 grams per cc is a dense mafic iron magnesium silicates what does it means the felsic you should remember this term that is felsic felsic means it composed of silicates that are lighter in nature while the silicates that are found in the oceanic crust is mafic which is very heavily dense in the nature okay that are found in the oceanic crust now moving on to the composition of the crust okay this is also very important part of our lesson okay that is oxygen contains 46.6 percent while silicon contains 27.7 percent while aluminium contains 8.1 uh, percent okay iron contains 5 calcium contains 3.6 and sodium contains 2.8 and potassium 2.6 so the division is oxygen silicon aluminium iron calcium sodium and potassium so this is the sequence of the crust while moving on to the chemical composition by percentage of the our earth in total okay earth in total so earth in total gives you first iron then oxygen then silicon then magnesium then nickel then sulfur then titanium okay you should remember this is the chemical composition by percentage of entire earth not the crust okay there is a difference this is entire earth okay and this is crust crust so moving on to the next slide that is the mantle that is 83% of the earth's volume and ho which holds 67% of the earth's mass okay it contains 83% of the earth's volume and holds 67% of the earth's mass it extends from the moho discontinuity to a depth of 2900 km while the density of the upper mantle is 2.9 g per cm3 as we know that is the uh, of uh, oceanic crust and that is uh, give rise up to 3.3 g per cm3 the lower metal extends between beyond the asthenosphere that is this viscous layer that is found above the metal okay density ranges from 3.0 gram per cc to 5.0 gram per cc in the lower metal region that is the upper metal and there is a lower metal so metal is composed of silicate rocks that are rich in iron and magnesium relative to the overlying crust okay the metal is made up of of our 45% oxygen 21% silicon and 23% magnesium so awesome awesome okay you should remember this osm okay the temperature ranges from approximately 200 degrees celsius at the upper boundary with the crust to approximately 4000 degrees celsius at the core metal boundary okay there is a convective material circulation in the metal what does it means means there is a metal okay always there is a convection current like this the magma is rising all the time and it is coming as a volcano in our crustal region so this is the continuous sequence of convection current in the both the direction right hand and left hand side for giving rise of this phenomena that is the convective material circulations okay now moving on to the asthenosphere okay the asthenosphere just 
lies below the lithosphere extending to 80 to 200 km which is a highly viscous and mechanical weak and ductile its density is higher than that of crust aid in the plate tectonic movements and isotatic adjustment what does meet means means there is a earth okay we have seven continents here which is moving okay which are also moving okay this movement is based on the that movement of semi viscous liquid that is present in our asthenosphere which is moving over which this lithosphere lie which moves accordingly okay as well as there is a subduction of our mountains near the subduction zone okay and there is a rise of mountain also which is uh, showing the isostatic adjustment that the elevated part at one part of the crust area is counterbalanced by a depressed part of the another means sometimes one mountain rises while some areas some land goes subside okay this process happens regularly on the surface of the earth those are called as the isostatic adjustment okay the mass of our entire earth remains same okay the main source of magma that finds its way to the surface during the volcanic eruption that comes from the asthenosphere only to the crust this is you should remember this kind of layer this is very important layer you should remember this okay now moving on to the last layer that is the core the core is composed of two types of layer that is outer core okay where iron mixed with the nickel nifa and the trace amount of lighter elements are also there and it is highly liquid layer and it not undergo enough pressure to be solid so it is liquid even though it has a composition similar to inner core okay the pressure is somehow lower that's why this is in liquid condition density of outer core ranges from 9.9 .9 gram per centimeter cube to 12.2 2 gram per centimeter cube. Convection in the outer core combined with the Coriolis effect give rise to Earth's magnetic field. Okay, this is a very important point that you should remember that outer core is mainly responsible for the magnetic field of our Earth. Okay, the inner core is while composed of 80% iron and some nickel that also composition of nephe but since the layer was uh, highly pressurized condition so it is solid in the nature while since the layer transmits shear waves that transfers seismic waves it is a solid when e waves strikes the outer core the inner core boundary they give rise to s waves and the density of the inner core ranges from 12.6 gram per centimeter cube to 13.6 gram centimeter cube so the basic points you should remember here that the core of outer part is mainly responsible for the earth's magnetic field as well as it is a liquid in the nature okay while the inner core that composed of same composition that is nickel and iron that is called as nifa is can able to transmit the shear waves that is s waves because it is solid in nature and it when p wave strikes the outer core and inner core boundary at the layman discontinuity they gives rise to s waves okay so the density of inner core ranges between this okay and the temperature is also around 6000 kelvin okay this is also there so you should remember there is a higher temperature found in our reason okay i hope you understand all the parts of the interior of earth with thanks good day